Well, we're going to wrap it up out here, and we're going to go inside. We're going to check the temperature split of the furnace and check the walk bulb and the temperature in the house and show you how to use a digital sink synchrometer and look at the communication board and go over that. To get the walk bulb, if you're charging the air conditioner or checking the charge of an air conditioner, you take it in the return of the furnace. You can usually take it at the filter where the filter is or you can take it like a return grill up in the living space and you can get, determine the wet bulb of the furnace to the airflow. And here it's got a four inch filter. A lot of filters are like one inch <coughs> standard. This has got a little high capacity filter, it's four inches. And another thing is after I get the wet bulb, check superheat, subcooling. Another thing you always want to check is the temperature across the vat coil, across the furnace. You can take the temperature in return. Sixty-eight degrees. We've had the air conditioner running for a little while here. We can take the temperature of the supply. That's forty-five degrees. And that's, the temp and that's the difference in the temperature of the delta T for air conditioner running. And that's going to vary. This system has zoning. We got to make sure all zones are open because that's going to affect your delta T. Filter is going to affect your delta T. Blower speed is going to affect your delta T, but you're probably going to want to try to shoot for a delta T that is around 15 to 22, depending on the humidity. That's going to vary. That's where you're going to want to try to get from. And that will let you know if you're doing pretty good. And as far as the humidifier, you're going to want to close the humidifier off for the summertime, shut down the bypass damper, turn off the humidistat. Another thing I always do for air conditioning when you do a cleaning check is always make sure the drains are blown out and clear. The condensate drain for the air conditioner vac coil. The humidifiers and the furnace is also tied in all on the same drain. I'm going to take a wet ball reading right here to filter. Get the furnace running. And return. 50 degrees wet ball. Take it up in the space at the like a return grill. The older style had a sling psychrometer with a wet wick on it. You get it wet and whip it around in the space, and you can get your wet bulb reading the same way. The delta T, that's the difference between the air coming in and the air coming out. Exactly. Okay. Just like in the same thing for the heat. Humidity is going to take up a play in that. Airflow is going to take a play in that. Um, so we check the airflow coming in and the airflow. Air, for airflow coming out. You know what I mean? So, so before it gets it, evaporated or after it, like, Yeah, so I mean if if all your pressures that I mean if you just look at pressures outside and you're taking a delta T mm -hmm. and you get a delta T of eight degrees, then, you know, you, you better be looking at something. Because you're probably gonna be fifteen to twenty two, depending on your humidity. Okay, and the airflow. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, because you can have a restriction. So, it all comes into play in a part as far as determining the charge. Okay. So, I mean, it's all got to be pretty close because you could adjust something outside to make it look like the pressures are accurate and this and that. But if there's an issue where it's not cooling or keeping up when it's hot, you've got to delta T, superheat, subcooling. We'll tell you a lot. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll tell you a lot um, what's going on and where to look. Airflow issue, restriction, overcharge. Now, usually, if you got a pretty decent superheat, delta T's decent, you know, 15 to 20, superheat's good, but your subcooling is high, it would be either overcharged. Because if you have a TXV, that's always going to maintain your superheat. And if it's not a TXV, chances are you might have non condensables in the condenser, in the refrigerant charge. That would give you high subcooling. Restriction. Oh, uh, no. No, because if you got. Yeah, in the Because if you got a restriction, you got. Sure, you can get one part, but there's always another part. Okay. You've got a restriction in it, you might be able to get pressure to look right, but the superheat's not going to be right. Or your delta T is not going to be right. There's multiple factors in that. But non condensables, that happens. Cool. Yep. Up the yeah, not purging out the gauges and getting some air sucked into them. Very possible. Or it had a leak, sucking into it, running into a negative. That leak was on the low side, so we just charged it up. 
You could have some nodes and nodes losing it then. Sure, yeah, that is now. That's going to cause, it's going to give you some fluctuation. Okay. That give you high sub cooling. And sure, you could overcharge air conditioner to get the superheat to work, get your delta T, but usually your sub cooling is going to be pretty high. I mean, the condensing pressure might not be high, but the sub cooling will be high because there's air trapped in the condenser. Mm -hmm. That's going to affect your capacity. You might not know it on cooler days, but it's going to affect your capacity the longer it gets. Yes. Yeah, and you get complaint work. You know, a year ago when it was 90, it worked. And I had no issue. This year, it doesn't work. You know, I can't keep up. I can't cool my house down. Got to look a little bit closer and slower at it to determine. So diminished capacity and the capacity. Uh, coils and the air filter and everything. Then you want to like be able to get something back in the system. Yeah. Now that, that liquid uh, line filter, would it uh, remove that moisture? Liquid line? You know what? Yeah, it can remove moisture, but it's yeah. not going to remove air. And it's only going to go to a certain degree. Once, yes, yeah. Once, uh, once it gets saturated. Well, it would get plugged up, though, then, right? It, well, it, a filter? well, it can get plugged up from dirt and debris. Okay. But it can only collect so much moisture. Okay. And, and you never want to heat a dryer up to unscrew sure. it. You just go cut it out. Yeah. Because okay. if it's a bad system, you just heat it up, you're going to release all the moisture. Because then you recommend you cutting the dryer out. Yep. Normally, you don't have that situation unless you have a, something that's just not working right. Then you've got to check. You've know, you got to check every little thing, and that will help you determine what to look at and where to go. And then obviously, if you're in the system, you just reclaim it, yeah, and then you have to recover, evacuate it, okay. to get that out of there. 